How you doing guys? It's been a few weeks since I last did a vlog. The last vlog was at Knapp's Lock near Kilnacombe. That was a stepping stone getting back into doing photography. But I don't want to talk about that now. I am moving forward with the plan that I've had in my head for about six months, which was to do a short documentary on Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. Now, a lot of people who come to Scotland or a lot of people from Scotland at some point will travel through the park, whether it be in the Glasgow side or on the Stirling side. Um, it's just, it, it, the park is that big that you have to go through it heading north. And a lot of people like to head north, just as I do, because it's absolutely stunning. But yeah, this is all about things that you can do, the the locations that are that are available to you when you get to the, the, the National Park and the type of photograph that you can also achieve. You don't have to be a professional photographer. You don't even have to be an amateur. You can rock up with your camera phone and get an absolute cracking photograph. But I take my photography seriously just like a lot of people do and I like to sit and wait for that perfect lighting condition, that perfect calmness and that's what I feel makes my photographs different from someone who just rocks up with a phone and takes a snap. I hope you enjoy what's coming up. There is a short little vlog based over a period of two to three weeks where I, <coughs> I am meandering around the park at sunset, sunrise, midday harsh conditions, rainy days which was horrible, foggy days and very very cold mornings. I want to implement all those different lighting conditions, different environments to show the, the nature of this area so I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think on the photographs, on the content and if you're happy to see me back in vlogging um, yeah I'm going to stop laughing now and I hope you enjoy guys. So welcome guys to the Falls of Falloch uh, in Loch Lomond, just near Crean Larrick. I came here on my way to Glencoe just purely because there's been so much rainfall and the waterfall looks epic, absolutely epic. I'm sure you'll agree with me when you see it just in a second. Scotland. This is the beautiful Loch Ard, which is just uh, near Aberfoyle in the Trossachs, and you cannot go wrong with this location. It is absolutely stunning. You've got Ben Lomond just staring right down the loch at you, and this is truly a great place to come first thing in the morning to catch the cam reflections and you always get like a fog floating over the top of the water.
So this section of Loch Lomond is Loch Chown, which is still on the same road that you would travel through Loch Ard, and it's a famous camping spot. Uh, through the summertime and the peak period, you need to obey by the bylaws and pay for camping, but during off-peak season, you can camp for free, and as you can see today, there's so much going on with kayaking, and the sun is shining and it looks beautiful. is called Inversnade and this is where the Inversnade Hotel is um, which is very popular with the West Highland Way but the water is so 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 powerful just now because there's been a lot of rain as you can hear um, but it looks phenomenal, it looks really good So just now we're at Malarkey Bay and this is where the famous tree is that is usually submerged in the water when there's been a lot of rain and over the past couple of days there's been a lot of rain so I'm hoping to get something with the tree submerged in the water but if not it's still a stunning spot that you must visit when you come to the National Park and this is on the east side of Loch Lomond in the National Park so yeah come and visit Malarkey Bay Unfortunately, it's not submerged in water as I was hoping, but it still is a typical Scottish day. Dreek, weather and cold.
So this is the Duck Bay Marina and this is the most popular side of the National Park. You can see why, there is a, a big huge grass park just up behind me here. Summertime you find it very hard to get a space there. Um, but if you're also after superb food, the Duck Bay Marina restaurant is phenomenal, really is. And this is just like 10 yards away from where I'm standing just now. There is a little beach here um, in the winter time, but in the summer time there's more of a beach because the lock isn't so swollen. This is Firkin Point and this is a really brilliant spot for catching the Aurora Bores when it's cold enough and when it's far south enough and a lot of people from Scotland and probably the UK head to this location just to catch the Aurora Bores which just hovers beyond the banks of Ben Lomond and I've actually caught that same photograph myself here at this point and just when we were back there at uh, the Duck Bay Marina. So... Hi guys and welcome to Lop Akiri. I think that's how you pronounce it. Is this just not absolutely stunning? I'm going to try and get some photographs here because it's been a long long time since I shot anything here and what better time to do it right now when the colours are like this. This is phenomenal and hopefully the wind dies just a little bit and I can get some cam reflections on the water but it's time to get the camera out, get some photographs and Hopefully we see something special with the light tonight. Um, fingers crossed, but it's looking good so far. What I will say about the National Park is I have been doing this documentary over three, four weeks maybe and it incorporates a lot of different weather types and as you can see today is absolutely glorious um, but there's been days where it's been freezing, it's been rainy, it's been foggy everything that I described that would happen at the start of this vlog and today is a typical lucky day in Scotland um, and I'm so happy because Look at this view right about, it's absolutely stunning and this is why one of the reasons why you should come and visit Scotland and the National Park in Loch Lomond because when you get moments like this, you never forget them. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this part of Loch Lomond the National Park and let's go and explore some more of this amazing area. This is one of my favourite spots in the Trossics. As the sun is setting just now and light's getting a little bit diffused, it's time for me to go. So this is the end of what's been an absolute phenomenal journey around the National Park and can I just say that the National Park can be done in probably two days driving around it all and stopping off and seeing some places you really do need to spend I would say a week and take in all the activities that you can do Now this has been predominantly about photography for me because this is what I do um, but I wanted to incorporate all the things that you can do whilst in the park um, and right now I am just where the seaplane leaves which should be round about over here yeah here well this way um, it's kind of submerged in the fog so thank you very much for watching this and thank you for staying subscribed and um, yeah until the next time take care guys and I'll see you in another one very soon bye bye for now